Have you ever pondered over the origins of humankind? Or wondered how our ancient ancestors in the cradle of civilization, Africa, lived their lives? In the grand tapestry of human history, the threads of our story wind back to the rich, sun-drenched plains of Africa. The birthplace of Homo sapiens, this continent bore witness to the dawn of mankind. Imagine, if you will, a world untouched by modern conveniences, a world where survival depended not on the swipe of a credit card, but on the skill of the hunt and the fruits of foraging. This was the world of our ancient ancestors, a world dictated by the rhythms of nature and the changing of the seasons. Can you imagine your home swaying with the breeze high above the ground? For our ancient ancestors, this was reality. Picture this, the ancient man in Africa, not just living on the ground, but in the treetops. Yes, you heard me right, the treetops. Their dwellings were not simply nests. They were complex structures constructed with deftness and ingenuity. These homes were built from an assortment of materials, including twigs, leaves, and vines. Each one was a testament to the resourcefulness and resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Now let's add a dash of humor to our tale. Imagine the ancient man clad in his animal skin attempting to construct his first treehouse. It wasn't as easy as he had thought. There were branches to be cut, leaves to be gathered, and the constant risk of falling to the ground. Yet with each mistake, he learned. With each fall, he got up, dusted himself off, and climbed back up the tree. Living in the treetops was not just about survival, but also about community. The trees were a bustling metropolis of human activity. There were the elders, who would sit high up, watching over the community and sharing tales of the past. The children, on the other hand, played hide-and-seek amongst the branches, their laughter echoing through the treetops. Life up high was not without its challenges. The wind was a constant companion, sometimes a playful friend, at other times a fearsome foe. Rain was an uninvited guest, drenching everything and everyone. And let's not forget the occasional visit by a curious monkey or a disgruntled bird. But despite these hardships, there was a sense of freedom and an unbreakable bond with nature. The trees provided not only shelter but also food and medicine. They were the ancient man's fortress and his pantry, his pharmacy and his playground. And thus our ancient man had a home, a rather shaky one, but home nonetheless. Finding a partner wasn't as simple as swiping right in ancient times. So how did our ancient man woo his potential mate? Well, courtship was an art form mixed with a good dose of bravery and a sprinkle of creativity. Imagine, if you will, our brave ancient hero, muscles rippling, a twinkle in his eye and a hopeful heart. His mission? To win the heart of the most beautiful woman in the tribe. But there were no fancy restaurants to take her to, no diamond rings to buy, and certainly no love songs to serenade her with. Instead, our ancient Romeo had to rely on his own unique skills and strengths. He might have showcased his hunting prowess, bringing back the biggest game from the hunt to impress his lady love. Or perhaps he used his storytelling skills, captivating her with tales of his exploits and adventures, painting vivid pictures with his words under the starlit African sky. And what about the proposal, you ask? Well, it wasn't down on one knee with a shiny rock. No, it was a more community-involved affair. The man had to seek the approval of the woman's family, often offering gifts as a token of his sincerity. These gifts varied from tribe to tribe, but they could include anything from livestock to intricate beadwork. Marriage, too, was a community affair. It wasn't a marriage between two individuals, but rather a union between two families, two tribes. Everyone had a role to play, and each ritual had a deep-rooted meaning, reflecting the values and beliefs of the community. So there you have it. Courtship in ancient times was a far cry from our modern-day love stories. It was a dance of strength, wit, and community involvement. And while it might seem a bit archaic to us now, it's important to remember that these rituals were a vital part of their cultural fabric shaping their societies and laying the groundwork for future generations. Evidently, courtship and marriage in ancient times were quite the adventurous endeavor. What does it mean to be rich? For the ancient man, wealth may have been quite different from our modern interpretation. Let's travel back in time to the dawn of mankind, 
when Africa was home to our tree-dwelling ancestors. In those ancient societies, wealth wasn't measured in gold coins or bank balances, but rather in terms of practical possessions and social standing. Imagine the wealthiest man in the area. He didn't live in a skyscraper or drive a sleek luxury car. No, his wealth was much more tangible, much more practical. He was the man with the most robust tools, the sharpest spear, the most resilient shelter. He was the one who could hunt the biggest game, bring home the most food, protect his family from the harsh realities of the wild. His wealth was also social. He was respected, influential, a leader in his community. His opinions mattered. His decisions shaped the lives of those around him. He was the man others turned to for guidance, the man others emulated. Wealth then was as much about power and influence as it was about possessions. Now compare that to today's concept of wealth. Today wealth often means money, property, stocks and bonds. It's about the capacity to buy things, about consumerism and materialism. It's about having the ability to live a life of luxury and leisure, far removed from the realities of hunting and gathering, far removed from the need for practical survival skills. In many ways, this shift in the concept of wealth reflects the evolution of human society itself. As we moved from a survival-based existence to a more complex, organized society, so too did our understanding of wealth evolve. Yet, at its core, wealth is still about power and influence, about the ability to shape our environment and the lives of those around us. So, wealth in ancient times wasn't about bank balances, but about practical possessions and social standing. Despite thousands of years of evolution and progress, are we truly that different from our ancient ancestors? Let's contemplate this for a moment. Our ancient forebears, the men and women who roamed the African savannas thousands of years ago, lived lives that were both simpler and infinitely more challenging than ours. Their daily struggles revolved around basic survival, finding food, shelter, and fending off predators. Technology for them was a sharpened stone or a sturdy stick, tools that were essential for their survival. Fast forward to the present day. We, the modern men and women, grapple with a different kind of survival. We are ensnared in a web of technology, complexities of societal norms, and the pressures of a fast-paced life. Our tools have evolved from sharpened stones to smartphones, and our predators now take the form of deadlines, bills, and societal expectations. Yet, despite these differences, the fundamental human instinct to survive and thrive remains unaltered. Culturally, we've come a long way from the communal living and shared resources of our ancestors. The richest man in the ancient tribe may have been the one with the most goats or the largest piece of fertile land. Today, wealth is measured not just by material possessions, but also by influence, knowledge, and power. The ancient man's courtship rituals involving a show of strength or a display of resources to win over a mate have evolved into modern dating practices. Yet, the underlying desire to find a partner and build a family remains a constant. And what about our values? Our ancestors lived in harmony with nature, understanding the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Today, we are learning to appreciate this wisdom as we grapple with climate change and environmental degradation. So, are we truly that different? Yes, our lifestyles have changed dramatically, and our challenges are vastly different. But at our core, we are still driven by the same instincts and desires, shaped by the same evolutionary forces. As we look back on the life of ancient man, we might find more similarities than differences, reminding us of our enduring connection with our past.